Hey guys, I hope you're doing great and today we're gonna take a look at the beam calculation example once again but this time with 2D mesh. And first things first, you can do the geometry in two ways. So basically you can just create the geometry in hypermesh itself. So just create, like I just quickly show that to you. Just, just create like nodes, um, in this case two notes and did you notice I have a little program running in the background which just is yeah monitoring all my shortcuts so you see what I'm doing on the keyboard and it's also highlighting the mouse clicks and hope that helps and you just create a line here and with the line created you can extrude a surface and in this case you have created a surface right so that's one way to do it. But there's another way, and this way is much more common, um, the way with um, the cat. Just creating a, a um, origin point. And I just created in uh, FreeCAD a surface, which is just like this. And I will just import it right now in Hypermesh. How that's done is with File, Import, Geometry. Now you're in this menu and you can just select any file which the reader can read. In this case, we're gonna take a look at the step file I created here. Um, yeah, so there are different files. Um, you can see about them in here with the reader. So those are the files which Hyperworks understands, can read. And in this case, step file is perfectly, perfectly fine. We can go with the defaults here and you see it's the same surface. All right, now let's go into the model preparation. So you see the hypermesh is perfectly clean, fresh. You just have the OptiStruct profile selected here. And we go now and create the material first. Create a material, which is aluminum. And the properties are 69,000 GM. Have to be a little bit more Careful with this 69,000, and I guess we had zero partial parcel ratio. Now, the difference with 2D meshing is in uh, compared to 1D meshing, you don't have to worry about the cross section and the inertias and stuff like that because it's all calculated by the geometry itself because it's completely defined. But it's not completely, the thickness is missing here. So if you had a solid block, then the geometry would define everything, but you don't have a solid block here, so the, the thickness you have to define. And you do that in the property. So just create a property here. Uh, it's a p-shell property, which is the default for any new property you create. It's an automatically a p-shell property, and it's perfectly fine for this example. So you choose a material, for example, in this case, um, aluminum. And here's the thickness. So 0 0.8 was the thickness. And you're set. So P shell, material, 0 0.8. Last thing to do, you want to assign the property and the, and the material to the component. So just select the component and choose the property. And now you select it here. Okay. Now that's, that's that. You have your model prepared. The um, thing next is meshing. So you don't have any meshes here or any elements. Meshing is done with F12 auto mesh. So that's for 2D meshing. And you just select the surface and hit mesh. So, and now you get a problem because you want to apply a load at the center point at the end of, of the beam. But there's no point here. The meshing has no point. So abort the meshing and just uh, think a moment about how can we force the measure to, to put a mesh point here. Well, one thing to do is to divide the surface. And here I want to have, go a little bit with the explanation here. Because <laughs> it's a little bit tricky to understand. You want to have a point here. So you divide just with a knife, you could think, or with a plane, um, the surface right here. So um, it's a bit counterintuitive, but just just look at it for a moment. So if, if the, the planner here would be the, the surface, which you want to divide, 
the surface or the planner want uh, the, the 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 plane has to, has to be defined with two points. No, it's one point and one vector. A base point, which can be any point on this line or the surface actually, and a normal vector. And the normal vector is perpendicular to the cutting plane. So the normal vector in this case is the y-axis. So don't get confused because you want to divide it in the direction of z or minus z, but it's it's the normal direction of the plane. Okay, it will, it will get clear in a moment. So you want to um, divide the surface. So you want to do a surface edit. So it's in jump surface edit. And here I just selected it for you. It's trim with surfaces planes. You just in the in the first corner here, select the surface, choose your y axis. This is the normal vector I talked about. And this is the base point, you could choose for example, this point, click on trim. And now you can see you have two surfaces, and the measure is forced to put in uh, a point here. So even if you do the same meshing with the same parameters, you see, there's a point here. All right, um, that's about it. It's we will start with this crappy mesh, um, just to to show you that you get a feel for how this this works. Um, all right, um, now constraints and loads. So first, we want to create a load collector for the constraints. So at one end, we want to fix the cantilever in place. So create a load collector named SPC, uh, go to the analysis and constraints and just all, all nodes here selected. Be careful with the temp nodes. They don't, uh, if, a, if a node, uh, the temp node is not, has a temp node has nothing to do with the model. So if there's a constraint applied to a temp node, it doesn't bother, but it's not the, the node beyond that. So for example, if I just click here once, the temp node is selected. If I just um, just quickly deselect it, if I hold shift and select it here, you see two nodes are added because the mesh node is a separate node. It's not a temp node. You have to be aware of that. So just select it with shift and click create, then create another load collector for the force. And the force is set here. Force um, we have to choose the node here and it's the set axis and 0 0.5 newtons and minus direction was correct. So that's okay. All right. Next load step. The load step is defined with analysis load step. And here you have the LS1, SPC is one, load is two, same thing like here. So that's perfectly fine. Press and create and see here that it has been created successfully. All right, um, now I think we have all for the first analysis. One thing you could do is to check your mesh. I know that it's not, and you, you know as well, it's not a good mesh, but you can check it here, mesh check elements quality index. Uh, maybe the different. I think I just clicked on uh, check elements, but I want to have the uh, the, the quality next. So with, with this, it's it's fine. Well, yeah, but I wouldn't think it's very fine for um, for 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 your stress purposes. It's definitely not fine because it's much too too less elements. You you have to have more elements because stress is is differentiating between one element and the other and there's too much of a difference and but you will see that in a moment just to be sure that you've applied the thickness correctly you just um, can uh, switch on the 2d detailed re element representation and now you can see here that's the, that's the thickness so that you don't have any uh, unit errors for example and that it is really a surface so you cannot use shell elements with anything or shell elements for block elements it's not gonna work well so um yeah 2d elements has to be a surface all right uh just quickly switching that back and 
now I'm just going to run it. 2D, that seems like a good option here. And now we can see it's minus 35. Well, it seems pretty much okay, I guess. Uh, it's not perfectly fine, um, but I'm, I'm more um, curious about the stress. Well, if I just click on results here, you can see the, the, the stress results on, um, yeah, on the beam and the displacement seems okay. And the stress is 32.19. So it's not perfectly fine, but yeah, it's within reasonable uh, numbers. So it's, it's a pretty good guess. So for more accurate guesses um, for the model to be more accurate, you can choose to mesh it with finer elements or with a finer element size. Um, if you remesh it, you would have to apply the loads and boundary conditions again, because um, the boundary conditions are defined at the mesh nodes and the mesh nodes, you lose the mesh nodes if you delete the elements. But I can show it how quickly how you do that. You just um, press F2, then you select the elements. F2 is delete. You select the elements, delete it, return. Now you see the loads are still here, but those are the loads you don't want to have or you don't need to have because those are the loads which are on the temp nodes. I can show you that. The temp nodes, um, if you clear all temp nodes, those are gone. Okay, um, now let me mesh that with a reasonable mesh. For example, let's see, let's see. Let me just quickly choose six. That's okay, I guess. And now I just have to apply the loads and boundary conditions again. So just sit back a moment and enjoy that I'm doing here all the work. So this one and this one. It's a good practice to just name your models that you have a, a quick yeah, a glimpse what what's in there. So finer, finer mesh, six for the element size. Now we have 35.38, which is basically, that's what, what we would have expected. And, and let me just quickly sh look at the results as well. Now there's a trick here. That's a pretty, pretty good practice here. So you have a hyperview open and you just can, um, switch the windows here to be a different style. So for example, we want to have, we want to compare. Now, if you click here, uh, you're in a separate hyper mesh, uh, hyper view in this case. Now you can open, you can just load the other file. So in this case, final six point um, dot H3D. And now here's the trick. Here is all what you want to see, right? And here's nothing. You could just click here and continue, but there's a much quicker way. You just click right here and say, apply style, current page, all selected. And what this does, it applies the style, which is in this window to the other. Ta-da, you're here. And you have the same element, you're the same legend, everything is the same. So if you have much work, put much work into how the legend looks and stuff like that and want to have it on to compare compare it basically on a different model, then you just use this technique uh, to get faster what you want. Well, you see a uh, 46.32, uh, I think that's almost it. Nah, not quite, 46.88. Now, Another thing is what, what you can do, and I'm pretty sure this will get a perfectly fine result, is to change the order of the element. So in this case, um, you just go to 2D and say change order, order change. Now you can select all the elements and say change order. And then you look on the bottom left, order change done, 168 elements. Yeah, order changed. So 
those are now second order elements and second order elements are much, much more precise um, because they can model um, the displacement change over the element, not linear, but with um, yeah, quadratic approach. So if I just quickly um, run that, and now you can see the trick once again, changing the layout to this, apply or open a another model here and just saying right click apply style current page all selected ta-da 46.87 46 and i think that's that's the result we were expecting so how you can how can you sh be sure that your your mesh is fine enough let me just say that or sum this up in one quick quick sentence you can put the mesh finer and finer and finer and if nothing changes or if it changes not not much then your your converged your meshing your your mesh refinement has converged and then you can be sure that it is on uh, yeah on the right approach um it looks not very much different here right um if you want to show that just switch on the element displacement uh, the element yeah, mesh grid, I guess. What is it called? The mesh lines. Yeah, because now you can see the changes. Well, here you would have to explain to your professor or, or your, to, to your colleague that those are two uh, second order elements and those are first order elements because that's not in here. But um, yeah, you can see definitely the difference from here to here. Thanks for watching. I hope you're doing great and uh, see you on the next video where we will cover the 3D uh, approach for the cantilever beam. Can't wait. See you soon.